And we are back. What is up, everybody? My name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking. And the last video, we covered the navigation stack. And I think a good follow-up video to that is that I'll cover the toolbar. So again, when I originally made this playlist, we looked at the navigation bar items. Uh, and that was how we put a button or whatever you wanted to, any kind of view in the top left or the top right of the navigation bar at the top of the screen. The new way to do that, though, is by using something called the toolbar. And the toolbar, it's just as easy to use, but it opens us up to being a little more adaptable on multiple different screens, multiple different devices. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys, of course, how to use the toolbar, but also a bunch of the really cool modifiers that we can now use once we start using the toolbar. All right, we are back, we are moving, we are grooving. What is up, everybody? In the last video, we looked at the navigation stack. Obviously, navigation stack is awesome, but there are a couple things that are related to this new navigation that I wanna talk about. One of those, of course, is the toolbar, what we're covering in this video. So earlier in this playlist, again, I did a navigation view bootcamp. And in that navigation view bootcamp, I showed you guys how to use navigation bar items. That's the navigation bar at the top, right? We could put items on the left, we could put items on the right. Navigation bar items, just like navigation view, is now deprecated. There's a newer, better way to do this, and that's with the toolbar. So we're gonna right-click the navigator, create a new file, a Swift UI view, and let's call this one the toolbar bootcamp. Go ahead and click create, get the canvas work in here. Awesome. And let's start by using our newly learned navigation stack. Let's go ahead and open the brackets. And in here, I'm just gonna put a quick little Z stack, maybe use a background color, use your favorite color. I'm gonna go with indigo because I probably never use that on this channel. Ignore safe area. And on the screen here, let's just put a text that says, hey, maybe give it a foreground color of white and that looks good. I'm gonna add a little emoji here just to brighten up the day. Hey guys. All right. All right, I'm gonna add in a navigation title that's called a toolbar. And we're gonna start with our existing knowledge of a navigation bar items. And let's use the maybe leading and trailing and let's just put these on separate lines. And real quickly, I'm gonna put a view here. So the leading, let's just do an image, maybe with a system name of heart.fill. And the trailing, we'll do another image with a system name of maybe gear, settings button, how about that? Cool, so the navigation bar items, it works. We see it already, it's working. But the new way to do this is with a toolbar. So I'm gonna open up the toolbar here. Let's just use the plain initializer with some content, open the brackets. And I'm gonna comment out my navigation bar items. And on this toolbar, we're gonna to add a toolbar item. We're gonna to need to adjust the placement. So let's use the placement here. I don't think we need to give it a custom ID. So let's just use the placement and let's just use the nav bar leading. So navigation bar leading, just like here it was navigation bar leading, navigation bar leading, and we'll just put in our heart.fill. I'm gonna do another one with a toolbar item. Let's use the placement of nav bar trailing, and let's get the gear back on the screen. All right, so far so good. Code's a little bit different, but our output is exactly the same. All right, but why are we using the toolbar? Well, the toolbar actually opens us up to doing more than just these two placements. And we can use we can see here all these other different placements. And I'm not gonna go through every single one, but it is important for you guys to know that the, the purpose here is that every Apple platform basically has a toolbar. So whether you're working on an iPad or a Mac or an iPhone, or I think even like the Apple Watch, there is a toolbar and we can use this same modifier. The toolbar though is going to look slightly different on different devices. So some of these like might not actually be fully supported on every device. So for example, I think like automatic and maybe navigation bar leading 
and primary action and principle. A bunch of these are probably the same thing on iPhone, but maybe they're different on iPad or maybe they're different on Mac. But let's take a look at some of these. Automatic is gonna put it in the nav bar trailing just where we see it right here. We could also move it down to the bottom bar. This is something that's new that I really do like. It's allowing us to put buttons down on this bar at the bottom. So maybe we could do like a, maybe a background color dot red dot frame max width infinity alignment leading. So now we got like a nice button hovering on the bottom left of the device, which is cool. What else can we do? We could do maybe, let's see, cancellation is gonna put the top left. Destructive I think is also, I guess that's top right. Keyboard is really cool. Actually, we should look at the keyboard real quick. I'm going to put a scroll view on the screen and maybe a text field. Let's use a text field here and we will just say placeholder. Let's bind to some text at state private var text type string and let's bind to it. Cool, 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 cool. Let's put this here. And I guess it's kind of hard to see with this indigo background. So maybe let's we'll just go back to shifting this to white. We can see the placeholder here. I'm not gonna go ahead and stylize this text field, but if I put the toolbar bootcamp as the first screen in my app and I run my app real quick, we can see that when I click on it and the toolbar pops up, the new, this new button is now on the toolbar, which is awesome. Because now I can put in a button here that says like send, or maybe I'm, I'm searching something and I wanna put some maybe autocomplete buttons or something like that. I can put a button right on the toolbar, which is incredibly handy. This would be really difficult to do without this. You'd have to like basically monitor the toolbar, find exactly how many pixels to put it up or deal with like the, you know, the spacing and the shifting of the screen as the toolbar moves up. But this kind of eliminates some of that stress for us. What else can we do? I think there's a couple more cool ones. Uh, I think principle is a good one. It's right in the center of the screen here. So we have the nav bar left, the nav bar right, and then principles right in the middle. Sweet. We could also do something like where we put in, you know, two buttons. So let's go back to nav bar trailing. Maybe we put in here, you know, some other button that says house.fill. And it looks like they're not working, but if I did this with two of these, I could get one to be a house, one to be a gear. Alternatively, I think I could also do like an H stack where I just put both of them into a single H stack and that works as well. I'm just gonna comment some of this out. We just need our gear for now. Other modifiers we have, we have, let's see, the, the toolbar visibility we can actually now hide the toolbar for certain placements so maybe i want to hide the navigation bar totally prior to ios 16 we had nav bar hidden so we can see nav bar hidden is also deprecated we used to just put true we no longer use that instead if we want to hide it we're going to call dot toolbar and look for the visibility option hidden this visibility option allows us to determine which toolbar that we want to hide. The tab bar, the bottom bar, the navigation bar, and now it's hidden on iOS 16. Let's add in a little content to our screen here. Let's get rid of this hey. I'm just gonna do maybe a, let's see, we're in a scroll view. Let's just do a for each, zero less than 50, or let's just add an underscore here. Let's add a quick little rectangle. Let's give it a frame of maybe, I don't know, 200, 200. All right, so we have our scroll here. And we can see the toolbar is in light mode right now. It's got this kind of like almost fully, almost fully opaque coloring at the top here. I can actually override that with a dot toolbar background. And I can say, let's hide that background. And of course we wanna use the navigation bar. So now same UI, but toolbars, the background is totally hidden. So this could help us on some UI if we wanna maybe customize, you know, how the look and feel of this up here. 
Obviously, it's not great that we have a black title with the black rectangles. So if I just make this fill color of blue, we could see it a little better what's happening. The buttons are going behind the toolbar. I don't really like that in the preview right now. So let's just put that comment that back out. We can also just override the toolbar color scheme. We can just shift right into dark mode for a specific bar for the navigation bar. So the screen is still in light mode, but the nav bar is now in dark mode. Something really unique. I think that's probably less common, but pretty cool that we can do that with just one line of code. I think this is this is part of Apple's push towards accessibility. They really want you to put buttons in the toolbars. If you're going to put a button in the top left, the top right, the bottom left, the bottom right, try to get it in the toolbar because these toolbars are automatically resizing for different screens. They're automatically adjusting for the different sized shape areas on different devices. So more and more, I've been shifting all of my apps to using the toolbar. Even if the UI is not perfect, sometimes we want to change the UI here. Like it's not exactly what we want. My recommendation would be to change your UI, maybe make your UI look a little less cool for the ease and comfort and, and accessible support that these toolbars give us. So if you're going to ask me what to do, I would say use the toolbar all the time. When I was just starting to code, I definitely wanted to build everything custom. I think a lot of beginners take a lot of pride in like building out a totally custom UI. The more I do this, the longer I do this, the more I recognize that using these native toolbars is just saving us tremendous amounts of time and effort. And realistically, nobody is using your app because of the button that is in the top left corner. They're using it for everything else that you're building. That's my opinion, at least anyway, take it with a grain of salt. Before we wrap up this video, let's check on a couple other things real quick. I'm going to add in a dot toolbar title menu. I recently found out about this. I haven't used it in production yet, but it's pretty damn cool. The toolbar title menu is a menu that's in the top of the toolbar here. So when I scroll up, you can see that there's actually a little button. And right now nothing's happening because we don't have anything in the closure. But I'm going to put in maybe a button that says, I don't know, screen one and an action. I'm going to do another one here, button screen two. So when we're using this toolbar title menu, we probably want to keep our nav bar title display mode in line so that it starts showing with this menu. But if I click on it, I now have this pop down menu, which is, I, I haven't seen this on many iPhone apps yet, but I think with this update, we're going to start seeing this more and more. So I can basically use this as almost like a, a, a tab bar. This is like a mini navigation. So I could put in filtering here. I could put in routing in here, kind of whatever I want to put into these buttons into this really cool drop down menu that I can just put right here. Obviously we can add our own drop down menus for some of these buttons. I did that in the Firebase course, but just for example, I could maybe have this navigation stack append to a path. And again, if you don't know how to use navigation stack, check out the last video. We just covered it. Everything you need to know about navigation stack in the previous video. I'm going to just real quickly at state private var, let's say paths. Let's bind to an array of string and let's just bind to those paths. And anytime this navigation stack gets a new destination string, we should tell it where to go. And we should tell it where to go by using a navigation destination for a string and this will be the new value and let's just go to that screen new screen with the value so here i'm just going to call paths append screen one paths append screen two so just like that couple lines of code we now have basically a fully functioning routing system in the toolbar, which is unbelievably easy to do, if you ask me. All right, that is it for this video. I just wanted to give you guys a quick introduction to the toolbar so that it is not confusing. Again, if you're still using the navigation bar items, they're deprecated, but they're still gonna work for a while. It's not a bad thing. The toolbar though, just does open us up to doing a couple more customizable things. And I think the toolbar is going to be make it easier to support your app on multiple platforms. 
So if you're going to add navigation bar items, throw them in a the toolbar and thank me later. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. And if you stay with me in the next video, we're going to cover, I would argue, the best update that has come from iOS 16. So stick around. It's going to get exciting. I'm excited. See you in the next one.